Um, there have been a number of uh, Arab Americans in the New York and New Jersey area who have been approached by Arabic-speaking men who claim to be connected to U.S. intelligence. And these uh, Arab-speaking men ask the Arab Americans if they would be willing to spy, basically, on their friends, neighbors, business associates, etc. And uh, it turned out that uh, uh, in, in about three cases that I know of, the, the um, Arab Americans became suspicious and reported these contacts to the FBI. And it turned out that um, none of these contacts were actually uh, U.S. intelligence or uh, counterintelligence in any way, shape, and form, and uh, the investigation uh, concluded that they were, in fact, uh, Mossad employees working out of the uh, Israeli consulate general in New York City, and that these people were, in fact, Israeli Arabs who were working for Mossad. So here you had, uh, you know, Israeli intelligence officers very aggressively recruiting in the American and the Arab American community and pretending to be American intelligence officers because they knew that their targets would not cooperate with Israelis. So the the uh, the, the big question of course becomes to what extent were these guys successful? How many people did they actually get to cooperate with them? Uh, how many others uh, maybe turned them down and didn't go to the police or go to the FBI to see if this was all legitimate? So it's a, it, this could be a much bigger story. And uh, and of course the the uh, the ending of the story is that the um, FBI has not moved aggressively against these people because the Justice Department just will not do it because it's an Israel issue. So that's that's the first story. I don't know if you have any other questions about that, Scott. Yeah, I think maybe we better stop and follow up here on a couple of things. Uh, your sources are telling you that this has happened how many times? Uh, uh, how many different Israeli agents uh, have been found out posing as American agents? And again, doing the job that the FBI is apparently for anyway, which is fooling people into at least beginning to act as terrorists. Well, you know, but the, the point is when, a, when an American uh, policeman or intelligence officer tries to get a source, at least he's representing himself honestly as an American. In this case, it's the Israelis pretending to be Americans to, to get these people to cooperate. There were, uh, I know of three cases where the people they approached, Arab Americans, uh, then went to the FBI and complained, and that's how the, they found out about the, these operations. Uh, apparently, the um, the Israeli office, the Israeli um, uh, Mossad officers involved are there are two of them operating or living or working out of the um, Israeli consulate general in New York. NBC News found the photos of the smiling detainee on an Al Qaeda website, where the headline calls him a 9/11 hero. Uh, it was uploaded by someone who called themselves a Muslim cleric, but with nothing else, no other detail, no other description. Is there any doubt in your mind who Mohammed Atta and Ramzi bin Al Sheib were working for? <laughs> I have doubts about everything, Scott. <laughs> well, let's hear about them. No, I mean, I just, you know, there are so many narratives going on outside um, of all these incidents, and there's so much information that's been buried in U.S. government archives. I, I, I don't think we'll ever know um, really all the ins and outs of, of uh, 9 11 or anything else. I guess uh, I can think of a lot more things to say along the lines of 9-11, but I guess everybody just go read Christopher Ketchum on all that. Now tell me about this thing with Phil Turney, because this is just as important. Yeah, well, this is an interesting story. Uh, it's um, uh, Phil Turney is a, is a um, USS Liberty survivor, uh, a very prominent one, very outspoken. Uh, I guess you could characterize him as, as extremely anti-Israeli as a result of his experiences. Uh, and, and for your, your listeners who probably all know about the USS Liberty, it was the U.S. intelligence ship that was attacked by the Israelis in 1967, and they tried to sink it and kill the entire crew. I don't, don't think there's any doubt about that. And uh, so anyway, he's been very outspoken, and he was in a, um, in a hotel in Southern California, and he was approached by a gentleman who appeared to be of Middle Eastern origin, uh, judging from his appearance and his accent. And uh, the, um, this gentleman uh, quickly got into a confrontation with Turney about uh, the USS Liberty and said, among other things, that uh, those sailors on, on the USS Liberty, they all deserved it. They should have all been killed. And uh, it, it was clear that he was either trying to provoke a, uh, a fight or, or something or was just trying to make a point. 
and and anyway, he revealed at one point that he was an Israeli um, government employee. Uh, he then went on to threaten Mark Glenn, who's a journalist up in Idaho, who has also been uh, very active in telling the Liberty story. So it was kind of an interesting little episode. You're saying uh, it was the same guy that harassed the other no, guy, too? No, no, no. Well, yeah, yeah. He threatened uh, Turney. He told him to... Uh, he, he he delivered a threat against Glenn also to Turney. I see. And uh, but anyway, the uh, the point being that uh, this you know you would think this story is almost too bizarre to be possible, but there were witnesses to it, including Turney's wife who was there, uh, witnesses who were in the restaurant in the hotel, and um, so the story appears to be credible. And they of course uh, both Glenn and Turney went to the FBI, and the FBI of course did not seem interested at all. In, in pursuing the story, and uh, they said we'll, you know, we'll check into it, and that's that's kind of where it died. So it's, um, you know, if it's true, and and I have to believe the evidence suggests it more likely to be true than not. Uh, it's kind of a scary uh, episode in which uh, somebody, perhaps connected with a foreign government, is threatening people in the inside the United States for for being uh, exercising their First Amendment rights. Yeah, well, don't worry. I'm sure that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton will stand up for him. Yeah, they've they've stood up for a lot of people lately, especially for that mosque in New York City. I noticed that Barack had a uh, had a had a real firm position that lasted 12 hours. Yeah, exactly. He's walking backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just like they spoke out about the murder of Farouk Dogan, if if only Americans are humans, well, then he was at least half a one or something. You think they could have at least mentioned it in some context, but no. No, of course. And then the third story I told in, the, in my, my little piece on the American conservative was about uh, Stuart Nozet, who was the, um, uh, the most recent Israeli spy arrested last October uh, for providing classified uh, defense information or attempting to provide classified defense information to an FBI agent who was pretending to be a Mossad officer. And uh, anyway, this trial it seems to be going in the direction of the APAC trial, where he's demanding that information be produced as classified. And if they produce the classified information, uh, it will reveal more than it's worth. And so it looks like the prosecution will probably have to drop the case. Amazing. You know, uh, 250, it could be a big or a small number, depending on the context. But in the context of John M. Cole, the former FBI counterintelligence officer, saying that that's how many investigations into Israeli activities, criminal activities in America, or at least, you know, activities that fall under the jurisdiction of counterintelligence and counterespionage, uh, that went nowhere, that seems to me like a pretty big number. Phil, how could that really be possible that in Washington, D.C., a foreign government really has this this much free reign, any foreign government. I mean, this rivals the British during World War II or something. Well, you know, the, the, the point is that the politicians in Washington are afraid of the Israel lobby, and it's that simple. And, and so they, they, they sort of sit down just like Barack Obama clearly did, and at a certain point they sort of they decide, you know, is this really worth it to me to take them on? There's a good chance I'll lose. There's, there's an even better chance that they're going to muddy the waters so much that it'll make me look bad. You know, and every politician makes this decision, and, and, and the ultimate decision is not to mess with them. And uh, I, think, I think that's what, what is 90% of this. It's, uh, and the same thing, you go to Capitol Hill, if you talk to congressmen privately, they all dislike the Israeli lobby. They dislike the pressure they're under, but they're never going to vote against it. Uh, they're afraid. These people are afraid. 